Hi again everyone. In this video we're going to discuss the gradient or the gradient field of a function of two variables. Now it's important to understand the gradient field of a function because it's one of the basic concepts of vector calculus and it, in particular it's useful to construct normal vectors to curves and surfaces it can also be applied to calculate the slopes of certain tangent lines um, in, um, intersecting with surfaces in any direction. And it can also be useful for um, computing line integrals. So for example, you're integrating over a curve to compute the work done. Now, in this particular ex uh, example, we've got a function of two variables. We're asked to compute grad f, this is the notation for grad f or the gradient of f, Nab this sort of triangle, this nabla f, we're asked to show that the gradient is normal to this level curve associated with this function and we're also asked to calculate the so-called directional derivative of our function at this point in the direction of this vector. So we're going to work through them one by one. Now. How do we compute the gradient of f? Well, it's just a vector involving the component, uh, the partial derivatives of f as the component. So if you wanted to sort of write this in ij notation, this is what you would have. Now by the subscripts, of course, here I mean df dx. Here I mean df dy. So for our function, which is defined by this, then the gradient is just, okay, well, let's compute the partial derivative of this with respect to x. So differentiate with respect to x, hold the y's constant, so we would get 2x compute the df dy for this, imagine the x is a constant, differentiate with respect to y. So this is our answer. Now what we formed here is a so-called vector field or a vector um, valued function of two variables. If you plug in any values for x and y you'll get a vector output it. Okay, so notice that we started with a function, just a, a, a real valued function. But what the gradient does, it, it acts on that function and produces a vector. Now, we're asked to show that the gradient uh, vec field associated with f, or grad f, is normal or perpendicular to the level curve. x squared plus 4y squared equals 16. Okay, so First of all, let's investigate what this type of curve is. Well, let's call it curly C. It's just the set of points satisfying this equation. Now you might recognize this, but if you don't, if then I'm going to divide by 16 and produce the following form. Now, this is an ellipse. Okay? So, at all points on that ellipse, grad f will take on certain values. What we want to do is show that the gradient of f and, uh, is perpendicular to this ellipse. So, what, what does that mean? Well, let me just give a rough sketch of this ellipse, so essentially it cuts the x-axis at positive 4 and negative 4, and it cuts the y-axis at positive 2 and negative 2. Now, if we have any point on our ellipse, our curve C, 
that point has a position vector associated with it. Now, it also has a tangent vector. What essentially the question is asking us to do is show that the angle between the tangent vector and the gradient function, uh, the gradient vector, is um, 90 degrees. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to parameterize our curve C using some vector function. We can then compute the tangent vector by differentiation, and then we want to show that that um, on these points, grad F and this tangent vector are perpendicular or normal to each other. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, let's parameterize C. Okay, well, let's use this vector valued function of one variable. I'm going to parameterize it using um, it's a bit like a circle, okay? I'm going to use 4 cosine t, 2 sine t. Now, I can produce this tangent vector by simply just differentiating the components of R. Okay, so we differentiate cosine t to get negative sine t and we differentiate sine t to get cosine t. Okay, so what we would like to do now is show that this is perpendicular to the, um, the gradient vector. Okay, well along my curve C, x and y are given by these uh, expressions. Okay, so what I can do then is, if I want to, just substitute in up here, replace x with 4 cosine t and y with 2 sine t. So I'll get something like this. So 2x will become 8 cosine t. 8y will become 16 sine t. And how can I show that these two um, vectors are perpendicular, well, or, or normal? Well, well, all I have to do is take the dot product, the scalar product of these two um, uh, vectors and show that it's zero. So I guess this is um, the following. So it's going to be um, 8 cosine t, 16 sine t, dotted with minus 4 sine t, 2 cos t. Now, remember when we take a dot product, you multiply the corresponding components and add them all together. So here we're going to get minus 32 cosine t sine t and here we're going to get uh, 32 sine t cosine t. So you can see that they cancel out. This is true for all t and therefore the dot product of these two vectors is zero thus grad f is normal or perpendicular tangent vector and thus our curve C. Okay, now you could have sort of proved this in a more general way using the chain rule, but, but I, it's not really necessary for this particular, particular um, example. Okay, the last question is calculate the rate of change, the so-called directional derivative of F, at this point in this direction. Now, 
our function f is a polynomial and therefore it's differentiable. Now for differentiable functions, the directional derivative which we denote by this is just computed using the gradient and a unit vector in the direction of interest. Okay, so it's a dot product. So for our particular example, this is our, our vector, our direction of interest. Um, now you notice that this isn't a um, unit vector, it doesn't have length one. So let's use this and form a unit vector in the same direction. So all we do is we take the magnitude and divide it into the original vector. So this vector has length root 2, so you square the components, add them together and take the square root. And this is our, our unit vector. So from part 1 we already have this. It was 2x, 8y. And what we're interested in is computing the directional derivative at a certain point, 1, 1. So let's compute this at the point 1, 1. We'll get this. And so the directional derivative at our point of interest is just the dot product of this with this. Okay, so dot product, compute, um, uh, multiply the components, uh, so 2 times 1 plus 8 times 1, add them together, so we're going to get the following. Okay, so we've computed an answer, but what is it? Well, if you imagine the surface associated with this function, okay, it's going to be a paraboloid, and you can form a vertical plane containing this vector and the point 1, 1, 5, that vertical plane will intersect with this surface and you'll get a curve. Now that curve will have a tangent line associated with it. What this value is, the directional derivative, is the slope of that particular tangent line. Okay, well let's look at the bigger picture. In this particular example, I've looked at functions of two variables, but the gradient readily generalizes to um, functions involving three or more variables. So if you had you know, a function of, say, three variables, what you would have is the gradient being this kind of um, vector field. Now for differentiable functions f, the vector grad f will always be normal or perpendicular to the level curves or level surfaces of f. Like I said before, um, a dr the directional derivative essentially measures the slope of a particular tangent line um, that you get when you intersect the surface with a vertical plane containing this point and this vector. And directional derivatives are generalizations of partial derivatives and the, the freedom that directional derivatives gives us is to measure um, slopes and rates of change in any direction. Partial derivatives are confined to two special directions. So here's an example I'm going to um, leave for you to do. Here's a function of three variables. So compute grad f, compute a normal vector to this surface, the level surface here at this point, and calculate the directional derivative of this point, uh, of this function at this point in this direction.